Hi everyone, it's James here from TSR Jivey Talks Tech. Time for part two of the great Dolby Atmos install here at Location Recordings uh, in sunny Essex. Thanks massively to the team at Cali Audio and Nate in particular for sorting me out with all of these amazing speakers. So I'll talk through what is where and how it is where. This will all make sense when we get onto the DIY side of things. But I just want to talk you through the mechanics, if you like, and the practicality stuff of my Atmos install. We have a 7.2.4 Dolby Atmos array. Why dot two? I'll come to that in a minute. But um, basically that is seven speakers on a lateral plane, two subs, one there, one there, and four height speakers, two at the front and two at the back. We'll come on to what they are and how they are and all that sort of stuff shortly. This has been an interesting part of the project because there is very little actual hard data out there in the real world. So I'd like to kind of correct some of that, if you like, and dive into some of those unknowns because you know, you think you can find out most things these days with a Google search. Turns out, not all the time. So let's start at the front. We have three Cali Audio IN8 speakers, eight inch drivers, three way, which is really nice. And the first thing most people say is why have you got them upside down? And it's really simple. The fixed height in this project is the height of the console meter bridge, which is just over a meter. Now, if I put the speakers effectively the right way up, that would put the tweeters about this sort of height. And when I'm sat down here, the tweeters would be shooting over my head. So by having them upside down, if you like, when I'm sat down, on this here chair, the tweeters are pretty much at perfect ear height. Now positioning the three front speakers is the relatively easy bit. It should be 30 degrees from center off to the left or the right, depending on how you're looking at it. 30 degrees off to the right or the left, again, depending on your point of view. And they should all be equidistant from me and from each other. I think it's 126 centimeters from the sweet spot to the left and the right, and they are 126 centimeters apart. The center speaker, as the name kind of suggests, should be dead in the center, and it is, but also 126 centimeters away. This will help with time alignment and all that sort of thing later on. So I've just pushed that center speaker back on the meter bridge a little bit to create that proper distance, 126 left and right and 126 to the center, which is really cool. So the next speakers on the lateral plane, if you like, are all Cali Audio IN5s. Five inch driver, again, three way, uh, similar power. I think there's about 10 watts in it between the eights and the fives, but that could all be sorted out later on with level adjustment. But the problem now starts with wall, no wall, because obviously the room goes further that way. There's a drum kit over there, all that sort of stuff. Now, many and various people have said I should probably have the room end fire, but I don't want that because of all the other things that I do, like making videos and having cameras behind me is rubbish and all that sort of stuff. So when I'm mixing an Atmos, there is a floating speaker here. It's not ideal, it's on a stand, but you know, it's one of those things. No installation is perfect. When I'm working in Atmos, the right, as I'm gonna call it, side is floating in space on a stand. Now it just so happens that those stands are also a meter tall, which is very, very handy. So you'll notice that the stand mounted side on the right and the wall mounted speaker on the left are also upside down and all the tweeters are at the same height, which is really, really important. You don't have to mess around with trying to fake it in software or anything like that or in processing later on. When it came to actually positioning the side speakers, obviously the one that's on a stand can go pretty much anywhere it needs to go. 
obviously I've marked the floor with tape and marked the cork that I've put the stand on so I don't scratch the floor. But when it came to positioning the left and the right sides, I was incredibly, incredibly lucky. From doing a bit of research and a bit of digging and talking to some of my new friends at Dolby, I found out that the sides should be 100 degrees plus or minus sort of five degrees from center. So I got some string and a mic stand and a protractor, well, a protractor app, and worked out that 100 degrees from the sweet spot put me between these two acoustic panels. Very, very handy and very useful that I didn't have to start moving around the acoustic treatment and all that sort of stuff. The wall mounts for the speakers, and that goes for the left side and the two rears, are all Triad Orbit. Triad Orbit have teamed up, or Cali and Triad have worked together, should we say, to produce a mounting system that works really well for their speakers. It's a three-part solution. We have the plate that actually goes onto the speaker. We then have the angle bracket that allows you to move the speaker once they're attached. And we have the wall plate, which is the bit that goes on the wall. Now, the power tools had to come out for this bit. Uh, I can't say I'm the greatest person at drilling into and fixing into plasterboard, or drywall as the um, Americans call it. But my theory was, go with plenty of fixings and make sure that we have at least, I think there's eight in there in the end, two at the top, four in the middle, and two at the bottom. Yeah, it's not pretty, it might be patched up a little bit, but for now it's okay. And they ain't going nowhere, which is great. They are very, very solid. The cool thing with these, of course, is that they can be taken out very easily. You can just lift up the speaker and it will come out of the wall mount, which is really nice. You can secure it. I haven't got round to that bit as yet. So for the IN5s on the left side, the left rear and the right rear, these are all attached to the wall. Now, positioning wise, I was incredibly lucky. Again, this is one of those things that there's very little actual documentation about. The rears should be around 140 degrees, again, from center, from north, if you like. And it turned out, again, by some sort of magic, that 140 degrees ends up with the speakers between the acoustic panels. So 140 degrees from center to the left and 140 degrees from center to the right takes me bang in between the acoustic panels. Very, very lucky indeed. Again, they're the same height. I had to work out the exact height to put the brackets on the wall. But again, that was kind of some basic maths and stuff. Work out the height on the speakers, work out when they're in the uh, in the cradle. But other than that, it was pretty straightforward to get the three speakers on the wall and obviously the one on the stand. Where things got interesting is these, the height speakers. Now, as anyone who has watched the build videos for this place, you'll know one of the things I did early on was kind of semi-plan for the Atmos rig. And this stuff, this is Global Truss F14. It's the smallest style of truss. But this stuff was designed, or by me at least, to have some speakers hanging on it. Hence, there's an awful lot of fixings in there that hold it to the ceiling and, you know, it ain't going nowhere, which is great. And this isn't just plasterboard or drywall, there's actually OSB above that as well. So there's, you know, there's some pretty heavy duty stuff to screw into. This time, mounting the speakers on the ceiling or on the truss was challenging. When it comes to working out where to put your height speakers, there's a very simple rule. Again, from your ideal listening position and listening height, it should be 45 degrees from center, from north, and 45 degrees up. So again, with a protractor or with your app, 45 degrees, 45 degrees. Same left and right, which is really handy. Again, for the rears, if you like, from, from due south this time, 45 degrees up, 45 degrees to each one either side. And I'm pretty close. 
I think this one is slightly further over than it should be, but that's purely a mechanical thing because of the fixings and where two ends, ends of the truss are joined together. I wasn't able to get the, the claws for the speaker fixings around the truss. But in the grand scheme of things, we're pretty close. It was a bit of a faff to try and work out the best way to do it, but I ended up getting the mounting plates on to the truss and then attaching the back plates to the speaker rather than assembling it and trying to make it fit all on the truss. It was a faff, I'll be totally honest, but I am not concerned that these are gonna fall. They are absolutely rock solid. You'll notice this one has some red tape on it. That is purely to stop idiots like me bashing their head. I think I am just about, I can just about fit underneath, which is quite handy. But the red tape's there, so when someone says, but your speakers are a ridiculous high. I can at least say, well, there's red tape on them. Maybe I should put a mind your head thing or something like that. I don't know. But they're up. Power wise, the power was already plumbed in already. Uh, signal was already planned for. It hadn't quite got to the right place, but it was all there, plumbed in, ready to go. And as it turned out, amazingly, all those signal cables actually worked. They run back through two holes into the ceiling and round to where they need to be. But um, yeah, so the DIY side was not too bad. I think it took me a couple of days to get them up. The All the mounting brackets and everything like that, the mounting hardware is phenomenal. The integration between the triode orbit, mounting hardware and the speakers is great. Four screws, bang. The speakers are hung upside down. So the tweeters are shortest distance to me which I'm hoping is the right thing to do. We've done a little bit of room analysis and it's good. I mean, I've been listening to this now for a few days and the system sounds amazing. I am so pleased with how it sounds in here. You'll have to come around, you know, come around for a listening party. The next video is going to be all about the configuration, if you like, the integration between the Mac and the controller and the speakers, between Pro Tools and the controller and the speakers, and me learning how this whole Atmos thing works. What are objects? What are beds? I might be calling in some friends for that one. So I really hope you enjoyed that. Thanks to the team at Cali Audio for these amazing speakers. Thanks to the team at Triad Orbit for helping me out with all the mounting hardware. Thanks to the team at Audient, but I'll come on to that one later. Thanks to you for joining me on this Atmos journey. If you do want to be kept up to speed with what's going on, please do like, subscribe, hit the bell, all the normal stuff. But for now, my name is James Ivey from TSR, Jivey Talks Tech, and I'll see you again very soon.